What's up everyone? Welcome to Prepared Pantry Presents. Today we're going to do something a little more unusual than usual. Um, we've done lots of pumpkin and pumpkin spice recipes uh, so far. Uh, enough in fact that there is a whole uh, playlist of them. But one thing we haven't done is decorate a pumpkin for Halloween. So uh, every year I uh, like to decorate uh, my pumpkins like M&Ms. Uh, like the M&M's characters, um, and uh, they get a lot of attention on Halloween, and a lot of people seem interested in doing it, and it doesn't have to be as hard as it looks like it could be. Um, I take a couple of shortcuts to make it a lot easier, and uh, I just wanted to show you how I do this. So uh, first off, you're going to need some spray paint, um, as many uh, colors as you'd like for what you'd like to do. I like to just do uh, red, yellow, green, and blue, and uh, you'll need some tape to mask off the uh, stem at the top. Now that's if you're using spray paint. If you're using regular paint with a brush and you're careful, uh, then you can probably skip that step. Now you can of course use black paint and white paint to paint the M's and the I's and all the little highlights. Uh, I like to take a shortcut and use uh, white uh, vinyl shelf liner, uh, contact paper, uh, self-adhesive stuff. Um, I use this stuff all the time for all kinds of uh, craft and utility projects. It's great when you want to do um, sort of custom uh, DIY vinyl lettering. You can cut it out with an X-Acto knife and peel and stick. Uh, but I use this to cut out the I shapes and the M shapes uh, for my M&M's pumpkins. And I've got some templates for those actually, uh, in case you want to use them. I've got a link down in the description. I basically just scanned the template that I use. Uh, but there's a couple of different shapes for the eyes and a uh, shape for the M. And the way I have that sized is for the size of pumpkin that I typically use, which are fairly large, uh, you know, maybe a foot uh, around pumpkins. Uh, but you can print it in different sizes if you like to get a template that's a different size, maybe for a smaller or even bigger pumpkin. But for me, uh, using the contact paper instead of all the time with uh, white paint and black paint, and for the black paint I just use a super big chunky uh, Sharpie. Uh, it just saves a ton of time and makes it a whole lot less hassle. So uh, let's head outside and get started. Okay, so before I get started, I like to lay out my pumpkins uh, in the order that they're going to appear when I display them. Um, make sure I've got the side that I want to put the face on facing forward and I've got it turned, you know, just the way that I want. Um, and that they're in the order I want, uh, as I said, uh, based on the colors I'm doing. So I'd like to do red, yellow, green, blue uh, because it's rainbow order. Um, but uh, you may want to think about which pumpkins you use for which. Uh, you know, for example, the yellow M&M is the peanut M&M, so it's usually kind of a, the, the tall, uh, goofy looking one. Uh, so I use the taller pumpkin for that. But again, uh, you know, you can use uh, any size pumpkin, any shape pumpkin you want. Um, it's a very, very simple process. So the first thing we want to do before we paint is mask off the top of the stem. Now, uh, if you're not using spray paint, uh, if you're going to use uh, you know, regular paint and a brush, uh, that's fine. As long as you can be neat enough, you don't really even need to worry about this. Uh, in fact, I'm not even being super exact about the way that I do this. I'm just trying to get most of it covered so that we mostly don't get paint on the stem. So I'll cover most of the stem with a strip of tape at the top. And then I will take little pieces of tape and do my best to roughly fill in all around the sides. And again, you do not need to be exact with this. You just want to mostly cover up the colored part of the stem and if anything, err on the side of um, leaving a little of the stem exposed so that you don't have spots of orange showing through on your green or blue pumpkin, for example. All right, now other than that, um, all of the pumpkins are clean and dry and free of any uh, you know, loose dust or dirt. Uh, that's important uh, just to make sure the paint sticks. Uh, again, I'm just using plain old cheapy spray paint. I'm not super worried about durability or longevity. These are pumpkins. They're already starting to rot because they're dead. Uh, they're only really going to last until Halloween, I would expect anyway. And, um, you know, again, I don't really care that much about it. So cheap spray paint, just fine. Okay, we are ready to paint. Uh, just make sure, again, if you're using spray paint, that you shake the can sufficiently to make it mixed. Um, if you don't, uh, it could be a little too runny or a little too transparent. You might not get the coverage you expect. It'll take several coats. Um, I'm still expecting this to take a coat or two per 
Uh, usually the yellow, because it's the lightest color, is the one that uh, is the hardest to get good coverage, but uh, we'll see. So we're just gonna paint away. All right, I'm gonna let these dry for a little while and come back and do a second coat. And when they are completely dry, we will come back and put on the faces. All right, we are back and ready to finish up our pumpkins. So the paint is dry and I have removed the tape from the stems, so we're ready to go. Um, and again, there's nothing to stop you from just painting on the M's and the I's with uh, white paint and black paint. Um, I like to just use the shortcut step of cutting them out of vinyl. It's just easier for me. Um, I think it makes for a, a, a cleaner looking, uh, more professional result. But again, this is totally up to you how you want to do it. So uh, we're going to first stick on our M. And you usually want it to go a little lower than you might otherwise think. And then we want to stick on our eyes. And when we do this, we want to make sure that we leave room for the mouth to go in between an M. Now for Miss M&M, &M, you're going to want to use the more elongated female eye. I don't know what necessarily makes it more female, but this is how the character is designed. <laughs> Okay, now with the M's and the I's in place, it is time to do the final accents in black. So for most of these guys, we're gonna draw the pupil up at the top of the eye. We're gonna just draw a little loop and a little loop and then fill it in. And a big old chunky Magic marker is really the best tool for this. And we're gonna draw a line along the top. And just above. Again, this is another reason why you need to make sure the, the paint's completely dry or you're never gonna be able to draw on it like this. And we're gonna make the eyelids. Gonna draw a couple of lines for the eyebrows. And we're gonna draw in kind of a squiggly, goofy looking mouth. And then fill that in. Now for Peanut, like I said before, he's kind of the goofy guy. So the pupil is still gonna be kind of up at the top, but we wanna see more of it. We wanna make him look kind of surprised. And you know, you don't have to be super exact or artistic with this. trying to show you how you can do this and get a pretty repeatable result even if you're not super neat about it. Okay, same thing on here. We want to draw a line up along the top of the eyeball. Draw 
draw in the eyelid. And give them eyebrows. And this guy will usually have more of an ooh expression on his face. See what a mess that marker is, but it still looks good. Now for Miss M&M, uh, same thing, right? We're gonna put the pupils up towards the top. And we're gonna draw the line across the top. But she does not get eyelids like the others. She gets just a few eyelashes. And a couple of eyebrows that look a little something like this. And she gets a mouth that has more more of a full lady lip. mark there. All right, we are done. Now just a couple of other considerations, depending on what type of surface you display these on, uh, because of the paint, you may want to put them on something like a, a saucer or a plate or a tray, uh, just to keep the paint from sticking to like a wood surface. Uh, out where I'm gonna put these, uh, they're gonna go on kind of a wooden bench. So uh, I don't want the paint to come off on the wood. So I'm gonna put one of these underneath. Um, I'm also uh, going to illuminate them with these little uh, solar lights. So. I got a four pack of these on Amazon for about 20, 30 bucks. I've got a link down in the description just in case you want to pick a set of them up. Um, I've actually used uh, two of these 24-7, 365 on the, um, as footlights over on the patio. Uh, they've worked perfectly for years, no issues whatsoever. Uh, and the rest of them I just bring out uh, the other four just for the pumpkins uh, around Halloween time. And um, I just put them so that uh, there's one light in front of each one shines up on the on the pumpkin and it's solar so we don't even have to worry about it and that's uh, about it so i'm gonna go get these set up and we'll take a look once they're out there you have it um, i'm gonna try and include some shots uh of this at night if i can get some good shots of it at night with them lit up uh, but other than that, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Just click the red button down below. Uh, make sure you hit the bell icon so you get a notification every time I have a new video out. And we'll see you in the next one.